down in the Word and the Word be in His will. John chapter 3, verse 16. For Yah so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. To have everlasting life to do what? Be a family. It's all about family. Genesis chapter. Genesis chapter 2, verse 3. I mean, verse 1 to 3 and 38. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. All the host of them. And on the seventh day of El, Lahim ended his work which he had made, and he restored, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. El, Lahim blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which Elohim created and made. And what did he do after he rested? He's in having the fruits, he's enjoying the fruits of his labor. And we're going to see how this is playing out. So he created everything and it's time for him to enjoy it. Uh, verse 38. Thee, and curse him that curses thee, 
and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. He's letting everybody know. You bless my family, I'll bless you. You curse my family, I'll curse you. Okay, because he's all about family. All right, now we're going to go to Psalms 127. Psalms 127, verse 5 to 4. Uh, matter of fact, I mean, uh, 3 to 5, I mean. Psalms 127, 3 to 5. Lo, children are an heritage, a heritage of El, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. See right there what he's saying, man, the fruit of my labor is my family, my children. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is he, happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. So, scripture right here is saying, man, happy is the man that has his quiver full of them, like El. So, when El has his family back, he's happy as a butterfly, doing his thing, making a joyful noise, and all that. Um, Exodus chapter 2, verse 1 to 9. Exodus chapter 2, verse 1 to 9. <clears throat> and there went a man of the house of Levi, and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him, that he was a goodly child. She hid him three months, and when she could not longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes, and dubbed it with slime, and with pitch, and put the child therein, and she laid it in the flags by the river bank, and his sister took uh, afar off to wait what would be done to him. You know, that's, that's, that's feminine nature. Women always like to know what's going on. That's it. You can look at this. Ain't nothing wrong, ain't nothing wrong with this characteristic. Uh, and the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river. And her maidens walked along by the riverside, and when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him, and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go? And call to the, thee a nurse of Hebrew woman, women, that she may nurse the child for thee. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And, uh, so the woman took the child and nursed it. Now, why was this all played out like this? Because <coughs> Yah loves family. Yah doesn't like the heartache of a broken family. So we all know Yah works in mysterious ways. And when you let Yah work in his mysterious ways, even though it might be interesting as it is, it tends to come right back to you fulfilled as it went for uh, Moses' parents right here because they were at heartache when Moses was taken away from them because the Pharaoh was killing all of the children. 
but y'all made it so that the child went right back to them with no issues under the protection of Pharaoh's daughter because y'all loves family. Okay, the next part of this, um, we're talking about some marriages. Uh, Malachi chapter 1, Malachi chapter 2. Malachi chapter 2, verse 16. Malachi chapter 2, verse 16. For El of Israel saith that he hated putting away, for one covered violence with his garment, saith El of hosts. Therefore, take heed to your spirit that ye deal not treacherously. So, Yah is not like broken homes. If you come together, y'all want you to stay together. He does not, he's not the author of the broken home. we don't get along no more. Or, or I, you know, some other body cut my eye or something of that nature. Y'all don't like putting away at all. Because he's all about family. And putting away in divorcement breaks the family. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, 31 to 32. Matthew chapter 5, verse 31 to 32. It had been said, Whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, Saving, except for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her, that is divorce, committed adultery. So Yahushua Mashiach is just making it clear, hey, don't be uh, making all these, these uh, minor arguments on why uh, the family has to be broken up. He says, only under extreme cases shall the family broken up. And that's for fornication. That's spiritual fornication too. If she worshiping the devil, you know, or he worshiping the devil, you know. And you know, or she sleeping with some or she fornicating with somebody or he fornicating with somebody, you know, uh, that's the only reason that should be done. And a uh, man can have more than one wife. That's in the law. Now it's when he's creeping, you know, doing the doing the devilish style, you know what I'm saying? The law, the law permits a man to have more than one wife. Uh, that, that's that's for that marriage. They need to talk about it, how, which way they want to go or what not. But um, but you see the point. He he doesn't like that, and that's why he made it clear. Don't put nobody away. Don't leave nobody for any other reason but for this fornication, because he hates a broken home. He's not the author of that. Now we're gonna go back to John three sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah, you know, you, you being you being uh, sneaky, you're not being forthright with your uh, with your mate, your your companion. For Yah so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Why did He do this? Because it's all about family. World's number one dad, big on family. Matthew chapter five. Matthew chapter five, verse thirty-eight to forty-eight. Matthew chapter five, thirty-eight to forty-eight. Ye have heard that it is said, it hath been said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, that ye resist not evil, that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. Why is that? Because, hey, sometimes the best way to resolve a family argument is just to take the burden that somebody's given, you know. And later on, you know, y'all deal with them in the spirit or whatnot. And this ain't talking about just anybody, you know what I'm saying? The devil come up to you, somebody talking about hell, Satan punching. It ain't talking about that, you know what I'm saying? 
strip time. Who is my mother? Who is my father? Who is my brother? Them and keep lost that matter. Leave my father. You know, it's talking about them. You got you offer this uh, good thing to them. You know, because I know the churches they talk about anybody. You know what I'm saying? So that means Satan too. If it's anybody, it's Satan too. So the things in context are Satan's going to misuse that and you know poke your eye out. You can't touch me. Remember. She didn't hurt your enemies, you know, it's not talking about that. It's talking about, it's a family matter. It's talking about family. And if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. Because why? Man, here the coat. To, to resolve a family matter, here you go. Y'all going to deal with it at the end of the day. Because the less friction you have in your family, the better peace, shalom is going to reign. And whosoever shall c compel thee to go a mile, go a mile with him. Go a mile with him twine. The scripture say, man, if your brother or your sister needs you to go do something with them, go ahead, man. Don't be uh, making excuses. Just go ahead. Because what is this establishing? I can depend on my family. You know? If my family following the law, statutes, and commandments, hey, man, can you go somewhere with me? Hey, can you go help me out with this? Go ahead. Give to him that asks thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor, and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemy, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you, and persecute you that ye may be the children of your Father, which in heaven, which in heaven, for he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? And that's why when he was talking to the... Um, I believe he was talking to Simon, um, and they was like, why you let this woman touch you and all this stuff? And then he was like telling them, them that I forgive much, well, they'll love much. Because they're going to come into the family with a, a humble spirit, because look at what he forgave me, you know? And you're going to have more, a better chance to establish shalom and love in your family. For if ye love them which love you, that's why you keep referencing John 3.16. They told Yah to his face, leave us alone. We don't want you. <laughs> but, he, but he still what? He loved them so much that he heard all what they saying, but he said, I'm still going to do, do you tremendously good. Because what is, what is his reward? Family. I can get my family back. My crazy, disobedient, destructive out of line family, I can get as many back as I can. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? But ye therefore perfect, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect, okay? So you got to have that, you got to have an outlook to be having, um, that's why the scriptures say, them that uh, win souls are wise above all, because you giving y'all back what he want, it's family. Uh, now we go to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, 27 to 30. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 27 to 30. Withhold not good from them to whom it is due. When it is in the power of thine hand to do it. So, your family, you know, if your family uh, needs something. Hey, man, I need a ride or I need something. Or can you help me with this? Can you go walk a mile with me? Don't hold back from your family when it's in your power. Say not unto thy neighbor, Go, and come again, and tomorrow I will give thee, 
when thou hast it by them, by thee, devise not evil against thy neighbor, seeing he dwelleth securely by you. And this is to uh, stink, uh, to continue to point this out. Your 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 devil enemy don't live by you. It's your family enemy that lives by you. You know the cousins y'all grew up fighting. You know all y'all life and you know and, and your 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 wife's uh, uh your your mother-in-law your father-in-law y'all got tension it's your family that's close by not the devil if the devil close by <laughs> you got problems strive not with a man without cause if he have done thee no harm just don't be starting up fights with your family members just because you're going through something or something or you're just feeling in your heart, in the heart of the sequel of all things, you just move you or whatever. Don't strive with your uh, family just for any old reason. That'd be for a real reason, you know, you crash into my car or something or, you know, some something. Uh, First Timothy, because all this is doing is to trying to keep as much shalom there, peace as possible, love, kindness there, for the family purposes. First Timothy chapter 5, 3 to 5. First Timothy chapter 3 to 5. Honor widows that are widows indeed. And we understand what a widow is, somebody who has lost a spouse. But if but if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn first to show pity at home. And it was in order to, because you know, before you come to the to the church, to the body, and say, Hey, we need something, you got family, you know, that can help you out, you know, before you go to the uh, to the church, to the temple. But if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn first to show pity at home and to requite their parents, for that is good and acceptable before man. So, you know, you're supposed to take care of the elders uh, in your personal touch of your family, you know. Now, she that is with, uh, verse, we're going to skip that and go to verse 8. But if any man provide not for his own, because the subject matter is here, you got a widow and you're supposed to be taking care of them. But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than the infidel. So it's about taking care of family. And if you don't take care of family, Yah is saying you're worse than the infidel. Meaning, why is he doing this? Because he's all about family. If you can't take care of your family, why you want to come to uh, New Jerusalem for? We about family here, <laughs> and you don't fit in here. You can go to hell, because that's why all the people not about family are. Uh, Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, 14-23. Verse 14 to 23. For the kingdom of heaven, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who calleth his own servants, and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one of he gave five talents, to another two, and to one and to another one, to every man according to his several ability and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and trodden with them, traded with them the same, and made them other five talents. And what is this really talking about? Winning souls. He's giving you the abilities to go win souls. Well, I won this amount of souls. I won five souls. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained another two. But he that received one went and dug in the earth 
and he did. He hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoned with him. So it's basically saying the presence of Father, this is a metaphor, it's a metaphor for, went away, he went, you know, and he put people in charge. So I was talking about the, uh, the, the shepherds the other day uh, for Torah study. He put the shepherds here. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoned, reckoned with them. And so he that had received five talents came and bought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained besides them five talents more. His Lord saith to him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. Because why? He has brought more family for Yahweh. And he is well pleased with this individual. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents besides them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord, because he is happy with these people because he's bringing, they're bringing his family back to him. And the more you family that you bring back to Yah, the more pleased he is with you. Um, now we're going to go to Second Exodus chapter 9. Second Exodus chapter 9. And Second Ezra chapter ten. Second Ezra chapter nine. Second <coughs> Ezra chapter nine, verse one on down. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time, wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, then shalt thou well understand that the Most High speak of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. For like as all that is made in the world hath a beginning and an end, and the end is manifested. Even so, the times also of the highest have planned begin, plain beginnings in the wonders and powerful works and endings in effects and signs, and every one that shall be saved, and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, wherefore ye, ha ye have believed, shall be preserved from the said perils, and shall see my salvation in my land and with my orders, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. And they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torment. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not hearkened, and they that have loathed my law while they had yet liberty, and when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not, but despised it. The same must know it after death by pain. And before, therefore, be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished, and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, whose 
the world is and for whom the world is created. Then answered I and said, I have said before, and now to speak, and will speak it also hereafter, that there be many more of them which perish than of them which shall be saved. Like as a wave is greater than a drop, and he answered me, saying, Like as the field is, so is also the seed. As the flowers be, such are the colors also, such as the working the workman is, such also is the work. And as the husbandman is himself, so is the husbandry also. For it was the time of the world. And now, when I prepared the world, which was not yet made, even for them to dwell in that now live, no man speak against me. For then every one obeyed, but now the manners of them which are created in the world that is made are corrupted by the perpetual seed and by a law which is unstable, unsearchable, rid themselves. So I considered the world, and, behold, there was peril because of the devices that were come into it. And I saw and spread it greatly, and he kept me a grape of the cluster, and a plant of a great people. Let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain, and let my grape be kept, and my plant for with great labor have I made it perfect. So, uh, so I know like uh, some parents say, man, it took, I had trouble raising you when you were a child. You bought me much trouble. That's what y'all are saying here. You know, I bought this with much labor, much pain to make it perfect because he wants their perfect family. Nevertheless, if thou wilt cause yet seven days more, but thou shalt not fast in them, but go into a field or fall flowers where no house is builded, and eat only the flowers of the field. Taste no flesh, drink no wine, but eat flowers only, and pray unto the highest continually. Then will I come and talk with thee. So uh, Yah is telling Ezra, hey, go in this field. You heard what he told him to do, uh, a few things. 26. So I went my way into the field, which is called Ardor, like as, the, as he commanded me. And there I sat among the flowers, and did eat of the herbs and the field, and the meat of the same satisfied me. After seven days I sat upon the grass, and my heart was vexed within me, like as before. And I opened my mouth, and I began to talk before the Most High, and said, O El, thou that showest thy, thyself unto us, thou wast showed unto our fathers, and trotted in a barren place, when they came out of Egypt. And thou spakest, saying, Hear me, O Israel, and mark my words. Thou seed of Jacob, for, behold, I show my law in you, and it shall bring fruit in you, and ye shall be honored in it forever. But how, but our fathers, which received the law, kept it not, and observed not thine ordinances. Says, and though the fruit of the law did not perish, neither could it, for it was thine. Yet thine, they that received it perished, because they that they kept not the thing that was shown in them. And lo, it is a custom when the ground has received seed, or the seed a ship, or any vessel meat or drink, that being perished wherein it was sown or cast into their hand.
are received, do it perish, and remain it not with us. But with us it hath not happened so. For we that have received the law perish by sin, and our heart also which receiveth it. Notwithstanding, the law perish not, but remain in his force. And when I spake these things in my heart, I looked back with mine eyes, and upon the right side I saw a woman. And behold, she mourned and wept with a loud voice, and was much grieved in heart. And her clothes were rent, and she had ashes upon her head. So he seen this woman as he um, talking to Yah in his heart, and this woman that is in his field, she's weeping, she has rent clothes, she has ashes on her head, the cell cell signs of mourning. Verse 39. Then let I then let I my thoughts go that I was in, and turn me unto her, and said unto her, Wherefore weepest thou? Why art thou so grave in thy mind? And she said unto me, Sir, let me alone, that I may be may bewail myself, and add unto my sorrow. For I am sore vexed in my mind, and brought very low. And I said unto her, What aileth thee? Tell me. She said unto me, I, thy servant, have been barren, and had no child, though I had a husband thirty years. And those thirty years I did nothing else day and night, and every hour would make my prayer to the highest. After thirty years, Yah heard me, thine handmaid, looked upon my misery, considered my trouble, and gave me a son. And I, and I was very glad of him. So was my husband also, and all my neighbors. And when we gave great honor unto the Almighty, and I nourished him with great travail, so when, I, when he grew up and came to the time that he should have a wife, I made a feast. And it came to pass that when my son was entered into the wet, into his wedding chamber, he fell down and died. Then we all overthrew the lights, and all my neighbors rose up to comfort me. So I took my rest unto the second day at night. So uh, this woman has elongated pain from not uh, having a child. She finally gets one. Uh, and then he gets married, supposed to be a delightful time, and then devastation takes place. And it came to pass, when they had all left out off to comfort me, to the end I might be quiet, then rose I up by night and fled, and came hither into this field, as thou seest. And I do now propose not to return to the city, but here to stay, and neither to eat nor drink, but continually to mourn and to fast until I die. So this woman is in deep pain for her loss. And you got to remember, Yah told him to go to this field. Then I left. Then I left I the meditation where I was, and spake to her in anger, saying, "Thou foolish woman, above all other, seest thou not our mourning?" And what happened unto us? Because Zion was in a state of uh, devastation. And Ezra is saying, you got one loss? And be quiet. We all in this situation. That's like, you know, that's like, you know, crying too loud on the slave boat uh, coming here. We all in chains. Be quiet, Samantha. Okay. How that Zion, our mother, is full of all heaviness, and much humbled, mourning very sore. And now, seeing, we all mourn, and are sad, for we are all in heaviness. Art thou grave for one son? 
He's saying, how dare you be brave for one son lost? You know, you got mothers out here losing ten, five sons. For ask, for ask the earth, and she shall tell thee that it is she which ought to mourn. So he's reproving this woman. Like, you know, you just, you just overdoing it. And out of her shall all others come. And behold, they walk almost all into destruction. And a multitude of them is utterly rooted out. Who then should make more mourning than she? Saying, who should make more mourning than Zion? You know, that has lost so great a multitude. And not thou, which art sorrow but for one. But if thou sayest unto me, my lamentation is not like the earth, because I have lost the fruit of my womb, which I brought forth with pains and bear with sorrows. But the earth, not so, for the multitude present in it according to the course of the earth is gone as it came. Then I then say I unto thee, like as thou hast brought forth with labor, even so the earth also hath given her fruit, namely man, ever since the beginning unto him that made her. Now, therefore, keep thy sorrow to thyself. He being cold, <laughs> he tell her, keep that to yourself, woman. And bear with a good courage that which hath befallen thee. So he's trying to tell her, man, don't, don't, don't go too much deep into this sorrow. You know, you know, it's time to, you know, not so express that so much outside of yourself. For if thou shalt acknowledge the determination of El to be just, thou shalt both receive thy son in time, and shall be commanded among women commended among women. He's saying, like, hey man, in due time, trust in Yah, you'll give you all that back. Go thy way. Then into the city to thine husband. And she said unto me, That will I not do. <laughs> I will not go into the city, but here will I die. So I proceed to speak further unto her, and said, Do not so, but be counseled by me. For how many are the adversaries of Zion? But, uh, of Zion, be comforted in regard of the sorrow of Jerusalem, for thou seest that our sanctuary is laid waste, our altar broken down, our temple destroyed, our pleasantry is laid on the ground, our songs is put to silence. And you know how Zion loves to sing, just go to any uh, church on Sunday. No, boy, don't let it be going. It's time, y'all. You know Zion, I love her, love to sing. Uh, our rejoicing is at end. The light of our candlestick is put out. The ark of our covenant is spoiled. Our holy things are defiled. And the, the name that is called upon us is up almost profane. Our children are put to shame. Our priests are burnt. Our Levites are gone into captivity. Our virgins are defiled, and our wives ravaged. Our righteous <coughs> men carried away, our little ones destroyed. Our young men are bought in bondage, and our strong men are become weak. Sound like it's going on right now. Because it keeps sinning, that's why. But you know, blood of Jesus, you know, I'm trusting blood of Jesus. You better trust him, lost that stick matters. <laughs> But, you know, do what you want. You got free will. You do whatever you want to do. And which is the greatest of all? The seal of Zion hath now lost her honor. For she is delivered into the hands of them that hate us. And therefore, shake off thy great heaviness and put away the multitude of sorrows. That the mighty man be merciful unto thee again. And the highest shall give thee rest and ease from thy labor. And it came to pass, while I was talking with her, behold, her face, uh, her face upon, 
her face upon a sudden shine exceedingly. So he's talking to this woman. After he, you know, telling her, you know, all this stuff, she began to shine. Exceedingly. And her countenance glistered so that I was afraid of her and moved what it might be. And, behold, suddenly she made a great cry, very fearful, so that the earth shook at this noise of this woman. At this point, he was like, okay, you nice something to a normal woman, okay? The earth shaking, you crying, you shining, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what did y'all get me into? Okay. Uh, 27. And I looked, and behold, the woman appeared unto me no more, but there was a city built. And a large place showed itself from the foundations. Then was I afraid, and cried with a loud voice, and said, Where is Uriel the angel? What y'all got me taking? What type of stuff y'all doing? Who came unto me at the first. For he had, he had caused me to fall into many trances. I'm trying to like them LSD, like, hey. Stop with the dresses. Because that's why, you know, it's, it's very vivid and, you know, and mine end is turned into corruption and my prayer to rebuke. And as I was speaking these words, behold, he came unto me and looked upon me. And lo, I lay as one that had been dead and mine understanding was taken from me. And he took me by the right hand and comforted me and set me upon my feet, and said unto me, What aileth thee? And why art thou so disappointed? And why is thine understanding troubled? And the thoughts of thine heart? And I said, Because thou hast forsaken me, and yet I did according to thy words. And I went into the field, and lo, I have seen, and yet see, that I am not able to express. And he said unto me, Stand up, man, for me. <laughs> it's your turn, Ezra, talking to this woman. Woman up, woman. We all cry. And he the angel said, Man, stop all that whining. Stand up, man, for me. And I will advise thee. Then said I, Speak on me. Speak on, my Lord. In me only forsake me not. At least I die frustrate of my hope. For I have seen that I know not, and hear that I do not know. Or is my sense to see, or my soul in a dream? Y'all got me in these trances. I don't know if I'm in a dream. Why am I in a dream? Oh, well, y'all Okay. Now, therefore, I beseech thee that thou wilt show thy servant of this vision. He answered me then and said, Hear me, and I shall inform thee and tell thee wherefore thou art afraid, for the highest will reveal many secret things unto thee. He hath seen that thy way is right, for that thou sorrowest continually for thy people, and makest great lamentation for Zion. So you remember when he was rebuking the woman, like, man, Zion over here spirit all this pain. We all in pain, you know what I'm saying? Because he's having compassion for his people. He's looking at the greater rather than just focusing on a minute thing at that moment. This, therefore, is the meaning of the vision which thou lately sawest. Thou sawest a woman mourning, and thou beginnest to comfort her. But now seest thou the likeness of the woman no more. But there appeared unto thee a city built it. And where else do you remember? The woman's face started to shine. And then she was gone, and then a city appeared. And whereas she told thee of the death of her son, this is the solution. So remember the woman was mourning about the son. I ate my son, my son. And then he died, and then it was 30 years for me to get, get him. This woman whom thou sawest is Zion. And whereas she said unto thee, even she whom thou seest as a city built it. Whereas, I say, she said unto thee, that she hath been thirty years barren. These are the thirty years wherein 
there was no offering made in her. Because Yah was not dealing with Zion at this point, and he wasn't accepting the offering. And so the light of his countenance was not on the city. And that was a great time to mourn when Yah is gone. Just like when Saul. Call the witch, 1 800 witch. <laughs> Can you let us know where Yah is? Because uh, he ain't picking up our calls. And this has been going on for 30 years now. But after 30 years, Solomon built the city and offered offerings. And then bore the barren a son. Bore a barren a son. And while, and whereas she told thee that she nourished him with labor, that was the dwelling in Jerusalem. But whereas she said unto thee that my son coming into his marriage chamber happened to have a fall and died. This was the destruction that came to Jerusalem. And behold, thou sawest her likeness, and because she mourned for her son, so that son just wasn't any son no more. That son wasn't just anybody. That son, that's why she was so in deep mourning. You know, he was thinking she was talking about one son, that son was the people. And behold, thou sawest her likeness, and because she mourned for her son, Thou beget to comfort her, and of these things which have chance, these are to be open unto thee. For now the Most High seeth that thou art great, or grieved, unfitted, un, un, unstoppable, basically, without cease, and suffereth for, and suffereth from thy whole heart for her. So he's saying, Yah has seen in your heart that you love your people so much that it pains you to see your people going through this stuff. So hath he showed thee the brightness of her glory and the comeliness of her beauty. And therefore I bade thee remain in the field where no house was built. For I know I knew that the, the highest would show this unto thee. Therefore, I commanded thee to go into the field where no foundation of any building was. For in the, this, for in the place wherein the highest beginneth to show his city, there can no man's building be able to stand. And therefore, fear not, let not thine heart be affrighted. But Go thy way in and see the beauty and greatness of the building, as much as thine eyes be able to see. Now, deep stuff right here. We finish this. He wasn't seeing Jerusalem, Jerusalem. He was seeing Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Millennial reign, Jerusalem. Coming down. And the angel says, because your heart is right, and you love your people, and you mourn for your family and the destruction of your family, you get first eyes on New Jerusalem. And then shalt thou hear as much as thine ears may comprehend. Enjoy yourself in New Jerusalem. For thou art blessed above many others. Why is he blessed above many others? The love for Yah's family he had. He was mourning next to the woman, but his mourning was for Zion, and that was Zion next to him. <laughs> but he didn't know that. That's right. But he mourned still for Zion and hope. For thou art blessed above many others, and art called with the highest. And so are but few. But tomorrow at night thou shalt remain here. And so shall the highest show thee visions of the high things which the Most High will do unto them that dwelleth upon the earth in the last days. So I slept that night in another, like as he commanded me. But the uh, point right here is 55. And see the blessing that God has given him. And therefore, fear not, let, let not thine heart be afraid, but go thy way in New Jerusalem and see the beauty and greatness of the building, as much as thine eyes be able to see. 
because his heart was for Zion. He loved Zion so much. Yah allowed him to look at this beautiful thing because Yah seen that he was for his people. All right. I hope y'all got the just out of that. Uh, verse uh, John, uh, Luke 15, 11 and 32. I'm sure y'all didn't think that was going in like that. <laughs> Where this was going. And New Jerusalem said, Zion said, when he said, stop crying, she said, no. <laughs> I'm going to stay here. Die. Luke, what? Uh, Luke chapter 15, verse 11 to 32. And then when she started shining, boy, he was like, man, y'all got me in these trances. I don't know if I'm up, sleeping down. But no matter where his was, his heart was for Yah's family. And that was the main part. You know, sometimes Yah will send you through a test to see where your heart is. And he passed that. And, and Yah was very pleased with him because he, he has the same mourning that Yah has for his people. Right. David, he mourned for his people. Uh, Joshua mourned for his people. He said, you have troubled us, Achan. And we get to that. And Yah going to trouble you for troubling his family. 15, uh, chapter 15, verse 11 to 32. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And remember, Yah so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, you know. And he had, and he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me, and divide it unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all these together, because you got to remember, free will, free will's in heaven too, that's why the angels did what they did, free will is above and down here, and some of the angels saying that, yeah, right. I'm chilling down here, the one that fell down here, and had the free will to either accept or not, mm -hmm. to accept, and down below, mm -hmm. found the chain. Mm -hmm. Well, it was not. I, I, I don't know the full story. I know the top dog, they bound the chain. But you got to remember, one third came down. All right? He didn't say one third went in the chain. I said something. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, so, you know, I was just saying, like, what happened to the rest? Maybe y'all worked with something to get them back. You know, but the big dogs was A's on everybody. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was the chief captains of the, of the, uh, of the offense. Uh, 13, and not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. Riotous living. And uh, basically, like, you know, you're living your life like a rock star. Party every day, cocaine, whores, all type of stuff. And when he had spent all, <laughs> as you know, you live like a rock star. You know, they, they ain't gonna they ain't gonna keep it up that long. There arose a mighty famine in the land, in that land, and he began to be in want. And he want, went and joined himself to a citizen of the country, and he sent him into his field to feed swine. And he would, and he would fan have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. So he's at a state that he's so low that he's eating with the pigs or eating. Correct. Y'all remember where he come from, though? He come from prince status. You know what I'm saying? And now he dining with the swine. You gonna eat that? <laughs> nah, man, I, I ain't hungry. I ain't hungry. <laughs> Cornbread. <laughs> you want that slop? Cornbread would be a delicacy. Okay. And when he came to self and said, How many hired servants of my father have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven 
and before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, now you got to understand, the scriptures say, uh, yeah, uh, Yah searches the wounds of your heart. So before you come to him, he already know where you're coming from. He know you about to lie to him. He know you about to ask him for something. You really don't mean it. He already know where your heart is. You know what I'm saying? That's why he said David was somebody after my heart. He's seen that love in David because it, it shines. And we got that doll love. He see, oh, here comes the master. Oh, I love you. Woo, praise you. Love his name. Hey, y'all need you to help me out with these things, these bills and this stuff right here and all this stuff. Get away from me, Samantha. Yeah, we need you. <laughs> well, he ain't at that moment yet. He's just like, go, go, get yourself together at that moment. But if she don't change, it's going to come to that, uh, that knocking at the door, come and knock at my door. Yahusha? Who is it? It's Samantha. I don't know you, Samantha. <laughs> Maybe I can get your head that I'll, I'll come to remembering something. Uh, 19, and I am no, uh, verse 20, and he rose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, because the father already knows the spirit he coming in, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Why is that? Yah is all about family. He want his family. The no good crackhead, whores, lying, adulteries, drunkards, you know, perpetual liars. He wants them to get right. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thine sight. So he already rehearsed this in verse 17 and 18. This is where I'm going to come. So it was already in his heart. I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to the servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on him, his hand, and shoes on his feet. You know, you just got to finish eating with the pigs. You busted, man. Shoes busted. Get him some shoes, y'all. Get him some shoes. Get him some shoes. And bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat, and be merry. For this my son was dead, and every family member that Yah loses, he sorrows for, he has pain over. He was lost, and is found, and they began to be merry. Now his elder son was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard the music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father has killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. Just like Yah, when he receives his children that are redeemed back safe and sound, Party time. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore, come his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgress I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might marry make merry with my friends, but as soon as this thou son was come, at, but as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. So this no good so and so, you doing all this for him? Because what? Guys, he ain't worried about he, the big deal is not really about the, how dirty you are, because he got that. And I worked something out to clean that up. His thing is about, will you accept my gift? Will you come back to me? Will we be?
be family? And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meant that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. You see, that love, because Yah is all about his family. That's all he wants is his family. All he wants to do is walk around in his garden with his family, enjoy the good life that he has built with his family. Because ain't nothing worse than having a big old mansion. You don't want a person in there. Anybody here? Here, 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 here. That's the spirit. Here, here, here. Right on top, boy. That's how it. Y'all got the usher shirts in this mansion by himself. You just, I just don't feel it. You know, I'm missing something. All right. Uh, Luke. Fifth, no, uh, Ezekiel. 18, Ezekiel 18, verse 21 to 23, Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 21 to 23, but if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he hath committed, and keep my statutes, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. Just like in uh, Luke 15, when he said, My son was once dead, but now he's alive. All his transgressions that he had committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. Because why? Look, man, what you did, I forgive you. All I'm worried about is spending time with my family. In his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. That repentance. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked shall die, saith El, and not that he should return from his ways and live, live with me so we can be one big happy family. Luke 15, 8. To ten. Luke fifteen. Eight to ten. Luke fifteen. Eight to ten. Either. What woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, do it not light a candle and sweep? the house and seek diligently till she finds it. And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me. What in uh, 15, uh, 11 to 32, what happened? Hey man, we about to have a good time. My son has returned. For I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of Yah over one sinner that repentance. Why are the angels so ecstatic for Yah? Because the family is coming back. The family is coming back. They know that this pleases Yah and this is mainly what he wants. His family. Okay, now we're going to go to Esther, chapter 15, Esther, chapter 15, and 16, 1 to 18, Esther, chapter 15, Esther, chapter 16, 1 to 18, this is in the pocket. Got you this time, brother. Yeah, I see y'all like, what brother Ryan doing over there? I know he know, but uh, I don't need this brother Ryan not use this this it too, man. Uh, I think I got this one. I was talking about uh brother 
that are in authority to be partakers of innocent blood and have enwrapped them in rem remitless calamities, beguiling with the falsehood and deceit of their lewd disposition the innocence and goodness of princes. Now ye may see this as we have declared, not so much by ancient histories, as ye may, if ye search that have been wickedly done of late through the palace, uh, Palestine behavior of them that are unworthily placed in authority. So he's telling them about uh, these people who are being uh, placed in authority unworthily. And we must take care for the time to come that our kingdom may be quiet and peaceable for all men, both by changing our purpose and always judging things that are evident with more equal proceedings. For Ammon, a Macedonian, the son of Amadatha, being indeed a stranger from Persia, blood, and far distance from our goodness, and as a stranger received of us, had so forth obtained the favor that we showed towards every nation, as that he was called our father, and was continually honored of all men, as the next person unto the king. But he, not bearing his great dignity, went about to deprive us of our kingdom and life, having a mindful and cunning deceits sought of us, the destruction as well of Macedonia, who saved our life and continually proceeded our good, as also of blameless Esther, partaker of our kingdom with their whole nation. For by these means he thought finding us this destitute of friends to have translated the kingdom to the Persians of the Macedonians. But we found that the Jews whom this wicked wreck hath delivered to utter destruction are no evil do doers, but live by the most just laws. And that's why in Genesis chapter 12 it says, I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. And you're about to see the cursing taking place. And that, because he's uh, solidifying, hey, these Hebrew Israelites, they do just, and they live by the justice law. And that they be children of the Most High and the Most Mighty Living Yah, who have ordered the kingdom both unto us and to our progenitors in the most excellent manner. Wherefore, ye shall do well not to put in execution the letters sent unto you by Ammon, the son of Amadat, because uh, Ammon was trying to destroy the Hebrew Israelites, and that was in the letter. And you got to remember, Ammon was second in charge at this time. He had a lot of power. For, verse 18, for he that was the worker of these things is hanged at the gates of Susa with all his family. Yah, who ruleth all things, speedily rendering vengeance to him according to his de uh, deceits. So, you see how Yah has so much love for his people that he don't, for his family, that he would not allow sin to be upon them from other people. He'll destroy you uh, if you try to destroy his people. Uh, Amos chapter 1. Amos chapter 1. So when you touch Yah's family, he's going to kill you and your family, like he did with Amon. He said, Amon is hanging at the gates right now with his family. You touch my family, I touch your family. The original, the original gangbanger, 2000 B.C., the original gangbanger guy. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> YH, the original gangbanger. The original one. The original Yakua Abba. You touch my family, I touch your family. 
Amos chapter 1, verse. Mm -hmm. Amos chapter 1, 9 to 11. Thus said El, for three transgressions of Tyrese, and for I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they delivered up the whole captivity to Edom. They delivered the whole captivity of the Hebrew Israelites to Edom and remembered not the brotherly covenant. So y'all big thing right here is, man, how you gonna do your brother like that, y'all? How you gonna do your brother like that? Okay. But I will send a fire on the wall of Tyrese, which shall devour the palace thereof. Thus said El, for three transgressions of Edom, because they also broke the brotherly covenant. How are you going to treat your family like this? This is family. Thus said Yah, for three transgressions of Edom, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because, did, because he did pursue his brother with the sword, and did cast off pity. So he had no pity for his family. And y'all doesn't like it when family don't have any mercy or love for one another. He doesn't like that. That's a, that's a quick way to die. And did cast off all pity. And his anger did tear perpetually. And he kept his wrath forever. Verse 12. But I will send fire upon Timon. That's another Edomite uh, sector which shall devour the palace of Bozeroth. Again, he's going to kill people who don't know how to be family. You, want, you don't want to love each other? You want to mistreat each other? I'll kill you. Because all I want is love, peace, and happiness. You know, some people like, you know, and some people talk about, oh, he's just a murderer. Y'all wants what he wants, and he's going to get what he wants. If he got to kill you, don't be in the way of y'all love for his family. Because he, because you know, you wonder why uh, in, in slavery, Negroes were being hung. All throughout the Bible, they was hanging, Moses was hanging people. Y'all say hang them. That's why Negroes was hung in uh, slavery. Because he was upset. And everybody cried, they're hungry, they're hungry, they're hungry. You're not understanding the spiritual thing here. Why why did they do why did they specialize in the hanging? They could hit you in the head with a hammer, shot you, drowned you. But no, they, they made it a point to hang you. To remind you. Y'all still upset? Sure what you saying, I know this is up beyond, you know. <laughs> it's cool. Well, hopefully they changed the turn before they, uh, the, the hanging was... I'm sorry, y'all, just... <laughs> y'all know I should have did this. By that, by that time, they didn't even know who y'all were. They just didn't uh, find suits. That was... Well, yeah. I, I asked Jimmy Rice. Well, well, nevertheless, what they called... Nevertheless, nevertheless, what they called him, um, you know, the, the presence of him is always there. Yeah, but... I know what you mean. They were Jews. And they, they were Jews first, so they had they already knew the name until they got here, mm -hmm. and, and they took that away mm -hmm. from them. They stripped it away no, from them. They didn't take it away. Y'all took it away. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, mm -hmm. At certain points, when, when, when he was beating Toby, well, that was of y'all. The, the thing where they crossed the line when they forward the affliction, that's what's in the I Bible. Know, I don't know who Toby. I understand slave name. When they, when they was beating Samantha on the tree, that was a yeah. Because why? Imperious whore children. I gotta correct y'all. And you know what I'm saying? He that spares the rod, spares the child. What do you say? I'm gonna beat you. I'm gonna get you to act right. And sometimes when he proves is so stubborn, you gotta get that whip in real deep to get their attention. You understand? It's eight to the third, fourth generation. Yeah, but when, I'm not talking about it. Oh, yeah, but, but Moses told him back in the day, your children going into slavery if you don't stop this. <laughs> and then they solidified when uh, Christ got hung. They said, 
Let this curse, let's not forget this. Let this curse be upon us and our children. Let the blood, what y'all think we're going to have? Y'all going to uh, plant apple trees and uh, pecan trees and make pecan pie? <laughs> They put a curse, our ancestors put a curse on us. They solidified the curse. It was already done when Moses said it, and then they said, yeah, let's make sure we sign, sign in blood right here. Okay. Tobias Israel uh, 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 Mary, sign this. Mary L, I hereby confirm <laughs> <laughs> by sound mind and body, and kill Yahushua. Yeah. Can we take the rabbits? P.S. Take the rabbits home. <laughs> P.S. Let the blood of him be on us and our children. Children. And children. Yeah, we can hear it. You know what I'm saying? So. That's why I said third and fourth generation. Mm -hmm. And you know, that hate him. Mm -hmm. That hate him. Bam. <laughs> Bam. So, but uh, they, the, the Gentiles who did that, who, who went above Yah's uh, will in punishment, they're going to get in trouble for that. Yes. You know what I'm saying? That's just I like, ain't tell you to cut off his testicles. That's just like the city of Tyre mm -hmm. back in the day in Babylon. And with Egypt, they Egypt, they wouldn't let them go. They forced Babylon them. Babylon did it too. Mm -hmm. uh, Persians did mm -hmm. it too. Grecians did it mm -hmm. too. Romans, Romans, mm -hmm. they all get me. They supersede mm -hmm. what they're supposed mm -hmm. to do. Supposed to do. They supersede it. And a lot of, and a lot of people don't know. Like they're so fixated on, oh, they beat us, they beat us. Yeah, yeah I told them to do that. Yes. <laughs> and they yeah. don't say that though. They, they uh, lead out. You killed my mom, my ancestors. You killed them. No, y'all yeah. killed your ancestors for your disobedience. Thank you. So you know. Mm -hmm. and, that's what a lot of uh, brothers and sisters really need to give that, you know what I'm saying? He's killing them now, too. Oh, yeah. Don't need yeah, ain't stopping. Even when he came out, that the millennial reign, when uh, he comes back, he's coming back to kill two-thirds of Israel before he kill anybody else. Gentile, Satan. Satan can chill out for a little bit. <laughs> he about to kill them. <laughs> I give a light taste on everybody. That's his wife, you know what I'm saying? That's chill. Satan, Satan, children, that time, when he come back, the first people he going to kill is his disobedient family. So, you know, I'm just saying, you know, a lot of a lot of brothers and sisters got to get out of their mindset, you know, oh, this lady, why they did this to us? Why they know? You did it to yourself. In Egypt, your disobedience. In Babylon, disobedience. In Tyre, disobedience. Y'all told them to go pick y'all up. Gave away. Yeah, gang, go pick, go pick up my children, man. They go, go teach them some lessons. And sometimes it lasted five, ten years, you know, fifty years. They repented. Three hundred, four hundred. Yeah, four hundred. You know, but but back the other ones, they were they were shorter too. He was like he was just sitting there to, for, to get corrected. Except for many. Mm -hmm. Well, that was four hundred years there too. Well, yeah, and then the, uh, the 400 years uh, in 1916, in 1600, uh, the 400 years. But um, Obadiah chapter 1, 10 to 14. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. See how serious Yah is about family. He's telling Edom right here, this is talking to Edom, Edom. Since you did this to your brother, and uh, I, I did that in the, uh, the millennial reign for the Hebrew Israelite lessons, Edomites are going to be servants in the kingdom, and after the millennial reign, he's going to kill every last one of them. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. In the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away, captive of his forces, Jacob, and foreigners entered into his gates, Zion, and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou was as one of them. And you got to remember, Edom was brother, Edom was family. You can't do that to family. But thou shouldest not have looked upon the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. 
neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction, neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Thou shouldest have not entered into the gates of my people in the day of their calamity. Yea, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. And that is to um, 14. Neither shouldest thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. Again, like I said the other time, our brother Edom, when the strangers came in, they said, hey, they got some over here hiding behind the tree. Come on, y'all. Time to go. <laughs> but you got to understand who, who did this. This was brother. Brother. Edom and Zion, Edom and uh, Jacob were brothers. Nevertheless, the bad blood lines you don't cross with family. You know? To cut off those of his that did escape, neither shouldest thou has delivered up those of his that did remain the day of distress. Because they broke the brotherly covenant. They broke the brotherly love. And now they're going to be put to death. And uh, you can read the rest of that. You know, it tells you the rest of that. Just for the millennial reign, they're going to be servants. Uh, not servants, they're going to be slaves in the uh, millennial reign. And then after the millennial reign, Christ going to put them to death. Uh, so again, don't go against the family. If you're family, don't go against the family. Because family is very important. Discipline in the family is one thing. But trying to destroy family members is something totally different. God will kill you. Um, Joshua 17. And sometimes God will make, uh, if you cross him too much, he'll make, he'll make your situation a family situation. Everybody dies. If you don't want to get together, you kill your wife, your son, your daughter, the dog, the cow, everybody die. Let's make it a family affair. And these people don't you know, as one of my scriptures say, uh, fear, the, the beginning of fear of Yah is the beginning of wisdom. People don't understand, like, y'all would mess you up, man. Joshua, Joshua chapter 7, verse 23 to 25. Joshua chapter 7, 23 to 25. And we also know the story of Achan. He stole some stuff, and y'all told him not to. And he brought a curse to his people. So when you bring a curse to your people, you harm the family. And you know how y'all feel about harming the family. Don't harm the, fa the family. And y'all says, I have no pleasure in fools. Now he said fools. Uh, 23 to 25. And they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them into Joshua and unto all the children of Israel, and laid them out before El. So all the stuff they ate and stole, they brought it before the Most High. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver, and the garment, and the wage of gold, and his sons, and his daughters. I just had to take them all right there. What? Where are we going? Your father made a very bad decision. And his, and his oxen, and his asses, and that he had. So every, you know, the little laptop he had? Yeah, take that with him too. The, the writing pen paper right there, take that with him too. 
his white hairbrush thing that we did, all this stuff, all, all the all that stuff. And they brought them in unto the valley of Parker. And Joseph said un, said, Why hast thou troubled us? El shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and buried them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. Y'all don't play by family. It's something that you don't do. You don't go against the family. Don't go against the family. You gotta be thinking the cows right there, they move, what's going on? Pop! Pop! His daughter, Pop! His son, Pop! Aiken! You know they really was aiming for Aiken! And you know, I think who it is. Who it is who got the throwing hand? I think it's um Benjamin. Who's known for being a immaculate thrower? Because you remember when they was uh, the homosexuals in uh, Judges 19, they was killing people by throwing rocks. They was killing a lot of uh, Judah and everybody else. They was winning. They was throwing. So you know, if Benjamin was dead, <laughs> pop. Don't go against the family. Uh, Second Kings, chapter five. Second Kings chapter 5. Because if you don't want to listen, Yah does not mind spreading the curse to you and your family. You know, and, and that's why, you know, so many people are cursed because, you know, you know, didn't know you. I mean, your grandma was a witch. Your, your grandfather was a warlock. You know, your mother was a complete whore. And, you know, like, bring this curse upon your family. And, you know, I every time I go to make ain't nothing in there. Why every time I'm driving, I'm getting pulled over by the police? I mean, why does this stuff keep happening to me, you know? You've been cursed. You better check out who your family members are, see if they were doing something they weren't supposed to be doing. That's right. All right. Second uh, Kings chapter 5, verse 20 to 27. Is it that much? 20 to 27. All right. But uh, Gehazah, the servant of Elisha, the man of El said, Behold, my master has spread, has spared, uh, naming this Syrian in not receiving at his hand that which he bought. But as El loveth, liveth, I will run after him and take someone somewhat of him. Man, why do you do this to yourself? You said, as El liveth. What is he doing right now? He is swearing by Yah himself. Yah, I'm about to go get this money, and I swear it by you. Why did you do that? I mean, you could just say, man, I'm about to get this money. You didn't have to, you didn't have to do that, yo. You just took it up a whole seal. lot worse. So the whole side put a seal on himself. Yeah. I'm about to get this money. What do you think you're about to do? Mm -hmm. Hey, but that's what it's true. The, the root of evil, the root of all evil is the love of money. You do some crazy things for the money. You give your last to a whore. You give your last to that slot machine. I know it's the big one. <laughs> Come on, 25 slot, slot, uh, what was the, uh, the, the craps. Come on, red 20, red 20. <laughs> Loser, you know. I know this one more time, one more time. It's the house money, it's the rent money. Red 15. The house wins again. <coughs> Y'all got some blood donation banks around here? <laughs> See if I can get about 20. <laughs> so, won't be a blood they give on that other stuff. Plasma. Plasma. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, uh, they switch it out with the blood. Plasma. So, so, he's a. Followed after Naaman. And when Naaman saw him running after him, he lighted down from the chariot to meet him and said, Is all well? Boy, you running like this? Somebody running like that? You just offered him some money a minute ago? <laughs> Naaman knew what it was. He couldn't get some of this money. 
And he said, all is well, because all about to be well, huh? I'm about to get paid on the door. <laughs> my, my master, my uh, master had sent me. Boy, you just lying on everybody, man. You just lying on y'all, Alicia. Oh, man, you just, and this just ain't anybody. This is a prophet of y'all, and this is y'all himself. Man, boy, that money, boy, that money's something dangerous, boy. Behold, even now there be come to me from Mount Ephraim two young men of the sons of the prophets. Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver and two changes of garments. Hey, you gotta get McDonald's. Uh, yeah, let me get a, a number one uh, extra gold flakes. Uh, Y'all got the, the gold shake, huh? Yeah, y'all, let me get one of them, too. Uh, what else y'all got? Y'all got some wool back there, some expensive stuff? I mean, yeah, you shop. Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver and two changes of garments. And Neiman said, be content, take two talents. And he urged him and bowed and bound two talents of silver in two bags with two changes of garments, and laid them upon two of his servants, and they bare them before him. And when he came to the tower, he took them from their hand, and bestowed them in the house, and he let the man go, and they departed. But he went in and stood before his master, and Elisha said unto him, Whence comest thou, Gehazi? And he said, Thy servant went no whither. I ain't been nowhere. I ain't been nowhere. Now, before he went nowhere, he made a vow to Yah. And then he lied on Elisha. Because nobody heard this. And now he lied to Elisha. Um, and he said unto him, Went not mine heart with thee? When the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee, is it a time to receive money and a time to receive garments and olive yards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and manservants and maidservants? The leprosy, therefore, of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. Mm -hmm. So if that seed here to this day, Best believe they got lepers. Sure and he went out from his presence a leper as white as snow. <coughs> so the point in that, y'all don't mind sharing the curse with your family. You know, you know Achan, uh, uh, in, in, the, in the book of Esther, they hang all of them. His children, the little girl, and all of them. You touch my family, I touch your family. Um, and the last one is going to be Zechariah. Chapter 8. Verse 3 to 6. Zechariah chapter 8, 3 to 6. Thus saith El, I am returned unto Zion, and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth, and the mountain of El of hosts, the holy mountain. Thus said El of hosts, there shall yet old men and old women dwell in the streets of Jerusalem, and every man with his staff in his hand for very age, and the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in the streets thereof. Thus said El of hosts, if it be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of this people in those days, should it also be marvelous in mine eyes, said El of hosts, because he's all about family. And right here, you see him getting his heart's desire, his family. And you know, y'all got a big part of sharing. That's why he said anything that be marvelous, and you got to put this in, they ain't going to be asking about prostitutes stuff, because the law is already in their heart, 
this the remnant, this the one third, these are the perfect ones. So anything they ask for Yah is going to be in in, in uh, righteous will. Some people going, hey, I would like five horses. You have them by the end of the day. <laughs> hey, can I just have a gold chair? It's in the making right now. Because Yah is pleased with his children being pleasantly, uh, experience pleasant things so you know it's like a, a child opening up a present you're happy because the child is happy and this is how Yah is because he's all about family so I pray the word went out in sincerity y'all learned uh, what was needed to be learned in the spirit and hallelujah